100 words. <coughs> Nine words on here make a lot of sense. This is, as my, um, Mark said, a great program. Basically, uh, I see a lot of um, business ideas in my job, and putting it down on paper is the first point is the hardest thing, getting out of your head down on paper. This is what we're talking about here. And doing it succinctly in 100 words. Mark talked about things like contrast, how to get your hook in there. Just looking at these two posters, you see contrast over here with small and big. You see here Richard Branson and you. No offence, but you're just not there yet. You see a pencil as a start point and Richard Branson as an end point. You, know, you get the idea there's a journey to be had. Getting it down in a hundred words is about getting your message across. If you didn't get that out of Mark's presentation, I'm going to reiterate a lot of what he said, but put it into a, into a different frame. If you look at this story, some of you may have seen this before. It's Ernest Hemingway's famous six-word story. He was challenged in a bar to make up a story in six words, and that's what he came up with. You can see it's quite punchy, it's pretty sad. But it shows that while people, everyone's been saying you've only got 100 words, perhaps you can flip that around and say, hey, you have actually got 100 words. That does it in six. Another concept that writers come up with, uh, have come up with, flash fiction. Um, a New York Times editor once said that this is a 55 word doctrine. Some people call it 100 words. A newspaper had once said to me, you have. 26 words to write your intro, talking about the inverted pyramid that Mark mentioned. That's the grab, that's the hook. It's what drags people in, sometimes it's all they read. You know, because you've done it, you read the paper. You've got a hundred, so that's four times that. What does a hundred words look like? Well, this is 288 words. This is Martin Luther King on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963, I have a dream, we all know it. Mark talked about the one to three minute pitch, this took him two minutes 88. This isn't the whole speech, it's basically the bit that most people remember, and it's the bit if you Google hard enough you end up with this one a number of times, which is how I vote. But what do you remember from this? I bet most of you know the speech, but you're not going to be able to quote it back verbatim. This is what a hundred words looks like. But what you really remember is this bit. Everyone knows that quote. You say it and people, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Martin Luther King. 34 words. If you want to get a little bit more pedantic, we could actually say Martin Luther was a little bit verbose. And take out the unnecessary words. <coughs> and this is really getting to the nub of what he's trying to say if you condense the message down. So we've got it down to 17 words from 300. Getting to the point is what I'm trying to say. We put it into a business context. This is a uh, paragraph that actually came out of a business, um, business case that came across my desk. It's a good sentence. It, uh, it was quite a poignant sentence in the business case. Now obviously the business case was about 10 pages long, so they didn't have the constraints that you guys had. But more to the point, they didn't need the 10 pages. Because you can, you can distill this down by just taking out unnecessary words. So this is really about the art of writing. And the art of having to condense your message down. And get it down to that pitchable length. Because you can always take it the other way, as Mark's point, pointed out by expanding on these ideas, putting in detail, putting in some flowery language that makes people sit up and pay attention. So by crossing out the unnecessary words, we took that down by a third from 29 to 20. Let's look at another example. So again, this was a real um, business case that came across my desk. And we could go through that and look at some, I think this is thing that's got a pointer in it, with the aim to venture into a completely new market. I mean, we could get rid of it completely. It's a new market. Research has been undertaken. We did research to articulate the characteristics of new groups of I mean, Sometimes you actually have to take something like this and just, that's what he's really saying. 
So by reworking it, you get it down to seven words. I mean, that's taking it 20% of where you started. So I hope you're getting the point of basically, Mark made a couple of points that um, if you rewrite things, you read it out to yourself, read it out to the people that you work with, and ask them to critique it. Say, which of the bits I can take out? Take out some of these extra words that you don't need. And read it back to them. Do they get the same message? Does it change what they think? It is critical how it's layered together, the order it goes in. But you try it a number of different ways, and you'll get a number of different messages. And in the end, you'll end up with your 100 words, which will be your bright ideas entry. Talk about some words you should use and some words you shouldn't use. So the ones we were crossing out are on the right hand side there. Jargon being a really good one for what time wasting. You know, if it's something that you understand, as Mark pointed out, I'm not going to understand it because I don't have a PhD in science. So I was like, oh, but we never have a PhD in science. The other words are getting to the nub of what we're trying to hear from you guys in the Bright Ideas Challenge. So to put it in context of actually what we're here tonight to talk about, about this competition which is kicking off right now and runs through the end of the year and will unearth some of the best ideas in the region and they'll all go up against each other for that final prize. What we're actually looking for and what you should be thinking about when you're writing your 100 words are these five concepts. And they're very similar to what Mark finished on. So they're not just dreamt up for the Bright Ideas Challenge, they come from a real context. He takes his presentations, he's talking to businesses all day, every week. So it's, it's real business case stuff. Originality, executing commercial potential. Do it from Wellington, obviously grow Wellington, we want to do it from here. It's a great aspiration, if you can, it means you don't have to move. Clarity and presentation, we'll go through them. So originality, is your idea really new? Can you say unique and mean it? Now there's an adage that there are really no new ideas in the world, and it, to be honest it's actually true, but there is an element of uniqueness in how you go about executing it, how you go about framing it. Often the best ideas started this like this, and they ended up like this, and everyone else is going like this, and they just did that. And all of a sudden it's unique, it looks the same. <coughs> But it's just a tweak. Have you looked at the research? Have you, looked, have you done a bit of a search? Have you done that competitive um, analysis of your markets? Looked out there, done your Google searches, done your online searches, done as much as you can, talk to as many people. Do you know if there's an idea out like this? Does this sound new to you? You'll be surprised how many people you've talked to. And they're going, I think I heard something about that. Why don't you talk to this person or, or, or set this term? And you'll be surprised what you come up with. Articulating your point of difference effectively goes to demonstrating your competitive advantage. And that's what the judges are looking for. Your competitive advantage, why your business is going to succeed in the market you're in, over and above the others who are doing a similar thing. Execution. So when we say no, there's no original ideas, the ideas that make it are the ones that are executed fast, cleverly, and with conviction. And that comes back to how you're going to do it. <coughs> going back to Mark's point that he sees businesses pitching uh, they're all excited about the idea. You can see how excited he is about his laptop. But they don't tell about the, uh, the team behind it, the skills, the experience that will make the idea actually achievable. A viable idea. Domain knowledge, that's a bit of jargon for you. But basically it means do you know the space you're playing in? Are you in the restaurant business? if you're doing a restaurant style idea or do you just go to restaurants and you think you know 
and you talk to a hundred businesses and a hundred restaurants, and that's how you know. What do you know about the domain that you're working in? And when you know what you know, what don't you know? And where are you going to, how are you going to fill those gaps? Because you're not going to get there without filling them. And that's why it comes down to a team. And that's why what Mark was saying about turning away businesses of one person is really relevant. You look at this chap over here, Richard Branson. All he does is the media stuff these days. I mean, he just has, you know, it's a, it's a ridiculous example. But one day you might be there. Every business you see has a team that can fill those gaps. You might think you can do it all now, but at the end of the day, after a year doing it all, you'll be tired of it. And you'll need a team to help you do it. Commercial potential. So we talked about what problem are you solving earlier. The solution to the market pain. What's the pain the customer feels that you're going to take away? Is your idea going to make me feel better? Is it the 5% that Mark mentioned? Or is it the 75% which is just going to make me feel like a brand new man? Can you do it en masse? Is there five people out there that you know that will take this or is there 5,000 in Wellington? Or 500,000 in Australasia? Take it to the next level as far as you want to go. Big dreams are, are good at this point. And we're not just talking about people, we're talking about people that will pay. So we're talking about sales, we're talking about profit. Do you know they'll pay? We see a lot of apps going out there for free. They've got a market. But until you get those dollars, the little Venn diagram that Mark drew on the board, it's still, it's just a hobby. A clear path to market is basically knowing how you're going to get there. So this is how you define the actual commercial potential which leads to a very viable and real market opportunity. Doing it from Wellington, that's what we're looking for because we want to keep the value here and we like having smart young things on the front doorstep. So you have to ask yourself, what do we need to do it from Wellington? When you look around you, you've got some very clever people in this town of ours. If you come to some of the networking events for the Bright Ideas, you'll see hundreds more who've got great ideas, great talents. And if you, can, if you can't network in this town, then you should go to Auckland. Because it's the easiest, easiest place to find a team to, uh, to help you get what you need to drive the business, your idea into a business, and take it to the world. Reaching the market. Everyone's heard about the, uh, the issues we have going to the world. It's easy if you're in a weightless economy, you're doing it online, etc., etc. If you're not doing it online, how are you going to do it? What's the best way to do it? How are you actually going to achieve that? That comes back to successful execution. Have you thought it through? Where are your customers? How do they buy? Why do they buy there? And putting all that thinking in a structure and a plan. So this sort of thinking will go into your hundred words. These are the sort of concepts that you're going to have to distill down to your, your original concept. Your hundred word pitch. And presenting it in a clear and concise way is going to be the challenge that you've got at this point of this competition. Focusing all of those things that we've talked about and defining your value proposition. What's the pain? Why do I want to buy? Why do I want to pay for what you're doing? What's the value to me? What's the value to the investor? The judges that look at these ideas are going to be thinking about it from an investment perspective. Is this a business that can go big? Can earn a lot of money? can be very successful, can change markets, can change consumer behaviour. So think about those sort of recipients, I guess, when you're talking about your value proposition. Six cent, a hundred words. Don't push it over that. And keep it very simple. 
So things to think about when you're defining your little package of beautiful words you've crafted so lovingly and you've got to insert into the Bright Ideas Challenge website and hope and pray but be utterly confident that you're the right one for that 25k. Key messages. So getting back to those very core value proposition. Bring those words up again. Value proposition. What is the value to the customer, to the market, to the investor? Make it clear and repeatable. When I say repeatable, I mean memorable. It's going back to Martin Luther King's speech. I have a dream. I have a dream that my children... Oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a great example, but it's probably more of a reflection on me than Martin. Your hook. What's going to grab you? What's that one nib that is going to excite me? It's going to make me think, hey, this is shit hot. This is something that could really go big. I'm excited about it. That means how many others could be excited about it? And we've already gone through the crossing out exercise. What you don't need to think about, and you'll get to this point, because you end up with 300 words, and you think, Christ, how am I going to get this down to 100? Go through it, look at it. Where are you over detail? Where are you being a clever dick and trying to be colourful and entertaining? Get back to core messages. Sounding intelligent and ridiculous phraseology. I do it a lot. <laughs> So, that's really all from me. This is what it's all about. I hope you've written those down. They're on the website. 100 words, a great idea. It's original. You know how to do it. It can make money. It can make money in a big way. You can do it from here, and you put it in 100 words, and it's clear, concise, and I get it.